Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about finding the equivalent load on each note. So in FEA, loading can only be applied on the notes. So if this is a beam with two notes, we can only apply the loads on the notes, not on the element. So if we have a distributed loading or we have a point load on the element, we have to find the equivalent load. One way to find the equivalent load on each node is to find the reaction forces and then just flip the signs and that would be our equivalent load uh, on each node so we can think of it we have two nodes each node is going to have a reaction force r1 and m1 and uh, when we flip these reaction forces that would be the equivalent load on each node and here i'm just showing you the the final answer but let's uh, see how we can find that equivalent load Whenever you want to find the reaction forces, you just make a section cut from a distance, let's say from left, and we call it at X. So let's call this point of uh, cut point C. We have a shear force, I call it V, and then we have a moment. I assume positive shear and positive moment. Positive moment is when we have an upward curvature. That's positive moment and then positive shear when it causes our beam to rotate uh, clockwise. So now if I write the summation of uh, moment about point C, uh, I can get the moment equation. So here would be our distributed loading. The magnitude would be Wx because it's rectangular shear. And then the distance would be half of x. That's why we have Wx times x over 2. And then here we are assuming counterclockwise to be positive. So I have my beam equation. If I take one derivative, I get slope and one integration constant. If I take another integral, I will get uh, another integration constant. I will get my deflection. So here I have the slope and deflection. Looking at these two equations, we have C1 as an unknown, we have C2 as an unknown, and also we don't know the value for M1 and R1. We are trying to find that. So we have four unknowns here. But we have four boundary conditions that we can we can solve these unknowns for. Uh, we know at x equals zero the slope and the derivative and the, and the deflection would be zero. So both C1 and C2 would be zero. And also at X equals L, the other end of the beam, same boundary condition applies. The slope and deflection would be zero. So we can find R1 and M1. Now that we have R1 and M1, we can find R2 and M2 by static equilibrium. So we can find all the loadings. And here, the equivalent loading on, on each node is shown for you. We did it for a simple distributed loading, a rectangular loading, but you could do the same thing for triangular loading or for a point load. So remember that these, uh, for in beam elements at each node, we have both, it allows for the application of a force and a moment and this has nothing to do with uh, the boundary condition so even if you have a beam with multiple nodes at each node we can have a load and a moment because at each node we can have a displacement and a rotation that would be our nodal displacements or nodal variables and these would be our nodal loading.